2023 has been a hugely successful season so far for Aidan O'Brien, even by his own lofty standards. There have been many headline acts like August Rodin, the dual derby winner who added the Irish champion stakes, like Paddington who won the Madrid handicap off a mark of 97 in the early part of the season and progressed to be a multiple Group 1 winner. And of course, like City of Troy, an exceptional juvenile and there's no telling how high he could go in the future. Aidan very kindly allowed us to come along here to meet him at Valley Doyle to check in with him as we move into the final stages of the season. And if we can reflect briefly on the season that you've had so far, you must be delighted <coughs> with the season, how it's gone so far. Yeah, I think so, Dan. I think everybody is happy. Um, obviously, we won some nice races and we lost a few as well. But in general, I think the horses ran well. I couldn't be happier, really. Um, like, obviously, we did have blips, um, but that happens. Um, but uh, so far, I think everybody's very happy. And your three-year-olds, like August Rodan, a dual derby winner who came back, and won the Irish Champion Stakes then after the King George, like he must have been delighted with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we always thought he was a very special horse. Um, obviously, um, we had a few blips like in the Guineas and in the, um, in, in the King George, but we, we were very happy. Uh, we, we had proper genuine reasons for that, that we felt. Um, um, but we always thought the world of him. He, he's very natural, always has been a um, very high cruiser. Um, um, I suppose that's what makes him very different. He cruises at a very high pace. Um, always when he goes there, you don't really see what's in there because he, he waits when he gets to the front. Um, but always was, we always felt a very, very special horse. And you seem to get a big kick out of his Irish champion stakes win in particular. I think so for everybody because obviously we had a lot to lose. Um, if if uh, he didn't uh, turn up, it uh, would have been a second very disappointing run in a row and that would have been... Um, wouldn't it be, would have been very very bad for the horse, um, but we felt there was a proper reason for Ascot, and we felt he was in a great place, and um, we were thinking, hoping um, for a very big run, and uh, um, Luxembourg was in great place too, so we knew that it was going to be a proper race, and uh, if if uh, he he wasn't there, Luxembourg was going to be there to to grab it, um, but Ryan was over the moon with him. He's he travelled unbelievable um, through the race. Um, he quickened up and went by Luxembourg and like I said he does wait and that's the way he has always been you know so um, no he, he was a, he's a very unique horse really um, he's very clear winded very easy to train um, um, a lot of natural ability a very high cruising pace um, so it was a big day and like, mm -hmm. we were really delighted for the horse really delighted for everybody and delighted for the horse really as well yeah and dropping back to <coughs> 10 firms as well after winning two derbies was yeah brilliant. yeah absolutely like, we always felt that he had pace for the guineas and that's why we ran him and uh, obviously then he went and won the two derbies and did the same thing in, at the Curra. He went by um, uh, our own horse and then he waited as well. But that's, he just dropped back into second gear and we, with what happened at the Curra. So um, turned in and he, he just waited. But that, that was him. Um, but uh, we always wanted people to see how classy he was mm. and what he could do. Um, like we f really fancied him going to the Guineas as well. So um, Obviously, when you have a horse going to champion stakes like that on, on fast ground in Leperstown, they have to have a lot, a lot of pace. Yeah. And at the start of the season, do you, I'm sure you don't set targets for yourself, but do you have a kind of an, an inclination as to what a successful season might be? Like you've had 17 group grade one winners so far this season. Yeah, no, not really, Donna. Like obviously, I'm a dreamer um, and always have been, um, but obviously, I wouldn't set targets. Um, but like obviously, when horses come along and that role and, and like we, we really do dream but like very few horses can fulfill those dreams really um, but when you get the special ones they can you know so um, I think yeah, you have to have a plan you have to dream um, and then you have to perform you know I, I think the lads are gone unbelievably brave they, they, they want the horses to perform they don't mind them getting beat mm -hmm. um, they really expose them um, more than I've ever ever seen it before because I think they, they absolutely love racing they're very passionate about it and they were always 100% uh, behind it all the way you know so um, listen we're just so so um, lucky to have them and, and them have so uh, and for them to be so passionate about racing really and, and do you get a chance at some point 
Is there a downtime when you can stop and look back on the season that you just had and enjoy it? Yeah, I suppose you don't really because you don't have time um, and you can't get complacent. Um, what's yesterday is gone. Uh, <laughs> the minute you go to bed that day is over and uh, if you think any more about it, you're not going to be thinking focused forward enough. Um, it's just the way it is. It's, it, you don't get time to focus on any other thing um, day in, day out. Absolutely. Like, you very rarely get time to read the paper. Um, you don't get to see much telly because you have to go to bed um, because you have to start very early. So it's, it's, but everyone is like that here. Everyone focuses very hard and when the ball starts rolling, if you take your eye off it, if it slips one way or the other, um, because it's your fault, it's very hard to accept. If it, if it happens and you can't do anything about it, then you accept it. But if you haven't done your best, um, but it, it, it is just the way it is. Um, like obviously, the minute any good day is over, you get the three hours going home that you're very relaxed and happy about that. But the minute you go to bed, you wake up in the morning and it's forgotten. <laughs> you know, again. It's just the way it is. And, you know, so listen, but we're very lucky to have the horses that we can, um, and like obviously the lads make them and cool more and, and everybody else breeders um, breed them. Um, very happy, very lucky to have them to be able to, uh, to be able to um, try produce them for those big races. And like everyone does their very best every minute of the day, really. Mm. And the yearlings, they're coming back in November, are they? so you're on the, the, on, the, on the look at look at ahead to the they future are, yeah. again. The, the lads are getting ready. The yearlings are usually in here in the middle of November. Um, but obviously the lads in Coolmore have them all ready and they have them sorted. And um, But it's it's such a big effort done from the time before a mayor has made it all the way along the amount of people that are involved. And I only mention a very small number of people uh, after every win. And they're the horses, they're the people that would be very closely, directly linked with that horse at that minute or that those days up to the race. But there's so many people from all the way along that no one, I don't ever thank or don't get to thank or um, I don't mention their names, but they're there and they're the people that make all these decisions happen. Uh, all these, you know, all them little decisions that they make all the way along, that's what makes it happen really. And like, we're just so grateful to everybody really. But um, it, it's such a massive team effort. The juveniles this season, they were, looks like a particularly talented bunch and like great season that they've had and that obviously all goes well for the future as well please god but at the start of the season did you think you had an especially good bunch of two-year-olds this season um yeah sure. the lads had them very highly rated before they came here as as yearlings um but you, you never know um when when what happens it's it's a day-to-day -day thing and the ball starts rolling and you don't know whether it's going to stop, whether it's going to get faster, whether it's going to go left or whether it's going to go right. Um, but the horses got into a very good place. Um, um, obviously, the, those horses, that are the good horses now, when the work started, they became very highly rated horses. Um, they can be highly rated coming in here, but then they have to continue on that rating where some of them don't. Some of their ratings drop and some of them rise. And But those horses, had, they had great pedigrees. Um, they were great looking individuals. and. The people that were riding them were all very happy with them. So obviously it's a very much day to day thing and, and you're feeling your way and you're changing and making little decisions all the way along and you're hoping that some of them are going to be the right decisions and some of them are not and some of them set them back and some of them bring them forward. So it's it's um it you're really afraid to think too much about it, um, because it can change so quick. Um like the wheels can go off so quick and then it's it's the momentum stops. So uh, really you're the same, you're taking it day day by day, but they were all by very good stallions, mm -hmm. all out of very good mares, all very good individuals, and uh, and had been like treated like kings all the way along, all the, through their whole life to to come here and turn up and perform, you know. So um, yeah, it, it's it's um, but it's it, it's incredible. It looked like a very uh, lot of very highly rated horses there at the moment. Yeah, and if we can just talk about one or two of them individually, City of Troy obviously has to head the bill, like what he's done so far, even on his, his maiden win at the Curra. Ryan struggled to put him up, pull him up. I think you were saying afterwards that Ryan said it was the first time that he actually got a wee bit scared going to the end of the run at, at the curve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He he he, he was a um, very special horse from a very early stage. When we start working him with the early horses, uh, half speeding them up, he was going up with the real quick horses, and and he was doing it with his head down between his legs, in the head and his chest on, on very heavy ground. So he looked like he was going to be different. Um, and obviously, when we ran him first time, uh, um, Ryan rode him forward and. He, Ryan started letting him go, obviously, to the two, and he took off going to the line. And Ryan said he never, ever got a fright like that before. He said he, he galloped down to the white wall at the curve the same as it wasn't even there. And he said he, he really didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> and uh, he said he was so nimble. He said he turned and, and took him out. But he said he never felt that on a horse before. So, um, obviously, 
he'd been working very well and we thought he would win but listen you're never sure mm. um, but when you see a horse doing that um, what's unusual about him when he goes past the two for long he starts strides start getting longer and longer and longer and um, I shouldn't be saying and I, I don't mean to be saying but I, we've never seen him getting tired yet so it's a very unusual thing in a horse so um, no um, but listen Dean's done an incredible job with him Ryan is great has given him great rides and he, he looks very very exciting mm. then to go on and win the superlative stakes by what six and a half lengths and then last time I just got the sense beforehand you were a bit worried about the ground yes yeah absolutely well in the superlative uh, Ryan Rodeman he said to me he wasn't going to let it happen what happened at the Curra so he I knew when he said that he was going to go early on him and and in such a way there's not a big long pull up in in the July uh, stakes at the July course either so I knew halfway I could see Ryan starting to go with him because he wanted to make sure that he was going to pull up for him so he, he, he went and, and we saw what he did he just kept going um, so obviously then uh, we gave him a little break we were going to go back to the national stakes um, he like obviously it was a long time since he ran the ground was a bit soft and he's a beautiful mover um, so it was very hard to say come back after breaking that bad ground it was going to be suitable and obviously we had Henry there so he was after having a run a couple of weeks before it and uh, we pulled back with um, uh, City of Troy and, and let Henry go um, so after that obviously the next race that was going to be going to suit him was the Dewhurst um, so he was 10 or 12 kilos heavier going to the National Stakes so that was on our mind a little bit as well right. so maybe he wasn't there so, so he's kind of heavier for the National Stakes than he, he has been for the Superlative. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So then we thought maybe he wasn't fully there. But then we trained on three weeks more to the Jew horse. And I think he was, in, instead of 12, he was 13 heavier. Right. So obviously he was after maturing and it wasn't fitness. So um, then uh, obviously the ground, uh, we, we walked the ground for the filly on the Friday and we were very happy. Then they got an inch of rain. So obviously an inch of rain on that ground, it didn't make sense that it was going to be a lot softer. So we knew there was nowhere else for him to go. Uh, we knew he could get beat. Uh, we knew he, he was going to be vulnerable, but uh, with, with the action that he had. But I suppose when it went back to what he was able to do in the spring in very heavy ground, and uh, he's a beautiful mover. So I, I suppose the way I, I described it was he, he has Grand Prix tyres. He hasn't got tractor tyres for a very heavy ground. But what he has is an incredible big engine. And, and we felt that the engine was just going to push his action through regardless. So. Uh, Ryan felt the same and Ryan said to us going out if, if he was the same horse he rode in the superlative it, it didn't matter about anything nothing was going to beat him so Ryan went out and obviously rode him the same way and uh, and obviously we, we saw what happened you know so the same thing went by the line and he galloped up over the hill again you know so um, he, he looks very different uh, at the moment so um, yeah so he, he looks very exciting at the moment really Dan and like obviously you haven't got near the bottom of him yet like what what could he be next year like there's talk of triple crowns and all that could he be yeah. as, as versatile as that I'd say he could be like obviously the lads will decide all those things I know the, 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 when Camelot got beaten the triple crown um, we always felt hoped that we would have a horse good enough but we never had so um, he like obviously uh, he's out of a, a, an Oaks winner he's by a Belmont winner mm. um, he has loads of speed, um, but looking at on his pedigree, there's every chance that he could get a mile and a quarter, a mile and a half, and could even get further. So he's very exciting, really. And, and listen, you'd have to say, like, you'd be very comfortable starting him in a guineas, you know. So uh, I, I think it, it's very exciting, really. Um, obviously, he could be like could be like something we've, we've never had before, but I shouldn't be saying any of this. We let him do the talking and see what'll happen. Yeah, I love it. Hugely exciting, obviously. Um, Justify his sire. He's only three year olds this year, yeah. so a very young sire as well. He's got opera singer as well, and she's progressed throughout the season. Yeah, I remember John saying it to me. Um, I, I didn't like. We didn't think he could be bought. He couldn't be taken out of America. Um, but I knew by John, uh, none of us went to see him. He just wanted him, and he was going to try and buy him. And and I remember when he bought him, like it was just incredible. Um, because John really believes in classic blood. And classic blood is, is you have to have speed and you have to have stamina. So I think what's catching a lot of pedigrees now is the stamina is disappearing. The, these fast horses are kind of getting to six and seven furlongs, but they're not able to carry through the class or the speed anymore. But what's very unusual about this horse is like they're carrying on seven furlongs a mile, a mile and a quarter. Like the, the best filly we had last year by a mile was a filly called Statuette. And she was a, a justify, but, and she, her, two runs I think were over five and six furlongs and she was a giant and she was no way close to a sprinter 
but she still had that kind of pace. So it's very exciting what 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 could be going to happen here. I think I think they'll go on. Obviously, he's obviously a dirt horse, so they're going to go on the dirt with their eyes closed. Um, they're 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 going to cruise and they're going to when when they go up to those mile mile and quarters. You know what I mean? They're mm. going to be unbelievable. I think really. An opera singer like she progressed as she went up in trip and she was really impressive. Yeah, the, the, the same second. thing when she went. From, I think she started in the maiden and then went up a seven and when she went to a mile, like mm. she just grew another leg. And the same thing, Ryan. Uh, no, Seamus rode her to Curry, went forward and halfway looking ahead. He started to move the two marker. There was nothing going to go near her, and uh, she just kept going away. And and Ryan did the same thing on her in France. He he set her off. He was happy to get a lead. If there was no one going to lead him, he was going to go. And the same thing. He started to move, and the same thing at the two. He had no looking at her. There was no one going to touch her, and she galloped through the line again. So, um, listen, it, it looks incredibly, uh, incredibly exciting for mm. for everybody really to have a horse like that with the versatility that they could have. And for us to be able to compete on the grass with them, and you would imagine they're going to be every bit as good, if not better, on the dirt. So um, I think it's incredible. He, if you ever saw Justify, like he's like a big sprinter. And for him, for anyone to tell you that he won at Belmont, I just don't know how it happened. You know, but he obviously had an unbelievable capacity because there's a picture of him coming down the straight in, I don't know whether it's the, the, the Derby or the Belmont, and he completely off the ground, there was a shadow, and instead of ducking from it, he just took off and launched and went over it, you know, so, like, he's just un un unbelievable, I think, really. Henry Longfellow, he, he deputised, I'm not sure if he, but he, he, he won the national stakes in the absence of City of Troy, and he's out of the brilliant minding, who was a phenomenal race, sort of self. Yeah, absolutely, listen to, she, we, we, she was probably the best Galileo mayor we ever had, and, and obviously he was by uh, Dubawi, um, PC rides him all the time, um, so, like, obviously, uh, he was always raving about him um, from the time he started in his maiden and went on to the futurity um, and then obviously went on to the national stakes. Um, he's, I suppose he's very like his dad as well as his mum, where he, he handles all types of grounds. He, he's loads of speed. Um, that day in the national stakes, there was a pacemaker and they went very fast and he just gobbled him up, you know, and, and uh, strided out to the line. Ryan was over the moon at him. Um, yeah, he looks an incredible horse too. Uh, Finn Barnes meet her in charge of him as well. So, um, yeah, he, so he's after having his three runs now. He knows plenty. Uh, he's gonna, I'd say he's going to be a fast horse. Uh, I'd say he's going to be a miler um, because of the pace he showed in the national stakes. You know, they don't usually have that pace unless they're mm -hmm. going to be very quick at three. And like he, he, uh, he travelled. And when I, when I think the horse that won the uh, Hines. Uh, Came off the bridle, he just he could scobble him up at the two, you know, and he was full of running. So he, he, he could be very exciting as well uh, next year, Don. Mm. And Diego Velasquez, he's a wee bit different. He's just, he seems to be better the further he goes. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Stephen rides him all the time. Uh, Alex is, is in charge of him. Um, um, yeah, he's, he's uh, he, we're very happy with him. Um, always were. Uh, he's, he's a very, very good worker. We were a little bit disappointed when he won first time at the Curra because he shows a lot, loads of pace at home. And that day he looked very laboured. He, so he was obviously very babyish and very green. So um, we knew that we, the plan was to give him three runs. So the, we were going to go to Leperstown and go to uh, Doncaster after that. So we knew he had to learn a lot at Leperstown. There was no point in him cantering around and winning on the bridle. So we ran the other Justify horse in it and he, he took him along and went a good pace. And we knew that he'd have to fight to get him. Mm. Uh, and he did, is what we wanted. So. Um, uh, he came out of the race very well. Stephen is very happy with him since, and Alex. So, uh, yeah, no, looking forward to the racing post with him. He's 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 a he's a very a lovely horse, great mover, very unusually marked. He white face and four white legs. He's very genuine. Um, probably going to improve a lot from two to three. Um, so, yeah, no, looking forward to him running. Yeah, and the, the last juvenile I'm going to throw out is Ylang Ylang. He must have been delighted that she bounced back in the Phillies Mile. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, um, Rach has done an incredible job with her. Um, Obviously, the wheels fell off of the wagon in the Myglare. Um, she ran twice and had to make her own run. And ideally, that wasn't what we wanted to do, but because she was sharp from the gate and she ended up doing it, and then she went to the Myglare on very soft ground and she wanted to do it again, and, and we didn't want her to do it. But because of that, Ryan said she just ran in a gear too high. and um, So obviously, he came in straight away and he said, listen, just put a line through that totally. Uh, she, she did everything backwards on him, and uh, so that was fine. And like Ryan being the man he, he is, he, he knew uh, what was happening and knew to mind her straight away. So we knew 
to go to a group one, she had to have another run uh, because we had to kind of teach her what to do properly. So, um, yeah, so Rachel wrote on all her work from there and, and uh, she started relaxing. Um, so we went to um, back to Newmarket over seven with the thing with, with the view to just not, uh, like obviously we want to win every race, but we needed her to do the thing right. So uh, Ryan was going to drop her in, take his time, regardless of what was going to happen tactic wise in the race. And, and the way the race worked out, you kind of had to be on the front end mm. to have any chance. Um, but Ryan came in after Newmarket and he was over the moon with her. He was delighted. Um, she was third, um, but she, he felt that she was only starting to get into gear, relaxed and did everything right. So the, then uh, Ryan said straight away, he said, come back here for the mile and that's her race. So obviously um, she's a filly with a high cruising pace that stays very well as well. She's a typical Frankel. She, she doesn't surrender easily. So um, obviously um, Ryan took his time on her in the, in the, uh, in the filly's mile and she relaxed lovely and got a little bump two down around there. I thought that that was her chance gone, but he felt that she had loads in reserve and she kept galloping, you know, she's very genuine. Um, so uh, over the moon with her. Like that'll be her finish for the year. Right. Uh, yeah, she'll start probably in the, oh, in the guineas. And uh, you'd have to say, look at her, there's every chance that she will get the Oaks trip as well. So um, she, she looks very exciting as well, Don, yeah. Yeah. And just looking ahead briefly to the rest of the season, continuous, really impressive St. Ledger winner. He's on track for the Japan Cup. He, he is, yeah. He, he, we were going to go back to the champion stakes with him and he got a little bit of a temperature. So obviously when they, they get a temperature, you have to medicate them. And when you medicate them, then it takes them out of the race. But he's back fine. He's back cantering again. So uh, the plan is with him is to go to the Japan Cup. Um, we were delighted with his run in the arc. Um, um, Ryan took his time what he always did on him and the pace just went a little bit slow in the middle of the race and, and that was the way it was but he came home very well and uh, Ryan was very happy with him after the run uh, he said his run is way better than anyone thinks it was so um, yeah so hopefully we'll go back to the Japan Cup with him a uh, race we've never won you need a good horse to win it so mm. it would be great if we could be competitive in it Do you think it's a race that might suit him? It's a tough race Oh yeah oh, it'll suit him alright because he's yeah. a good traveller he's a very off-handed horse he'll handle fast and soft ground it doesn't matter He's a great mind and uh, he's a lot of ability, that horse. He's probably better than anyone thinks he is. Yeah, and the Breeders' Cup was at Santa Anita this year. It's a, a venue that you have had a lot of success at at the past. Yes. August Rodan, he's on track for the yes. turf. Yeah, that, that's been the plan for him all the time. And he's done great too. He's had a nice break from Leperstown and probably a break like he never had. And he's thickened and got strong. And I know Rachel is delighted with him. Andrew's delighted with him too. So. Um, yeah, we're really looking forward. He's he's really grown up and he's another horse that didn't get a chance to mature because we trained him for a guineas. And uh, we, we trained him for a guineas and then obviously on to the derby and onto the derby and next derby and onto the King George. So it's tough with those baby three-year-olds. Um, but uh, we're, we're very happy with him. Um, yeah, very happy and he's had a nice little run into this and uh, no, looking forward to it. Ace was Fables, he, he ran a Big race in the Abbey the last Yeah, time. absolutely. We're delighted with him. He's a horse we always thought a lot of, but we couldn't get him back to where we wanted him uh, at three, that why he was shown as at two. So at the last day, Ryan rode him before the Abbey. He said, this horse is not doing a stroke. Uh, um, he said, he's just stuck in second gear and won't come out of it. So uh, he said, we should try a pair of blinkers on him. So we put blinkers on him. Uh, Seamus jumped him out of stalls uh, before it, and he said he felt a totally different horse. You know, so um, obviously he was just gone into sleeping mode and he needed something to wake him up. And obviously Seamus said that, but you still don't believe it until you see it. So Ryan rode him in the, in the lobby and he said, I should have taken on the winner. He said earlier, he said, I was cantering behind her. And he said he could see her fly out. And he said, if he was to go back again, he would have taken her on and like ran an incredible race. Mm -hmm. So obviously they really stepped him up on his French run. Now he's, he's gone back into what we thought he was, you know, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to be uh, exciting and, and uh, if we'll have him next year, if, if, if that doesn't work. Yeah, good. And finally, uh, will you have any juvenile runners in America, do you think? Opera uh, Singer, yeah, yeah, Henry we, Adams? Uh, Opera Singer is, is in uh, the filly that won the group race at the Cora is in, uh, that um, Chris won on. Um, then we have uh, the two wooden bassets, the horse that uh, was third in the middle park and then the horse that was second in the, in the Lagadair. Um, they're all Henry Adams as possible. So uh, really with those type of horses, we decide what's going to get in first and then kind of the 10 days before it, then we decide what we're going to run because this time of year horses can come and go very quickly. Mm. And I suppose the way the season are and the way the international programme is, the season, you kind of think in October, you're nearly at the end of it, but there's still plenty left to oh, run. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Well, you go on to the Breeders' Cup and then you go to Japan Cup and then you go to Hong Kong. So it's, the season doesn't really stop. And now it's starting very early as well with all the, races in the Middle East, you know, so uh, it's, uh, sure, it's, it's unbelievable, really.
Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.